what I'm going to do today, as John's uh, just already sort of given you an overview, is tell you a little bit about what we do here, um, the, the approach we have, what we're offering uh, in terms of your education, and also looking a bit more specifically about what will happen if you were to join us in January, and we'd love you to come and join us. We do have spaces and we do have many courses available. And also we are obviously uh, mindful of the current circumstances with the pandemic, what we're doing here to keep our, our staff and our students safe. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a presentation. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna put on, there we go. Uh, oh. So, John, can you confirm that that's on the screen? Yes, Julian, I can see the presentation. Great, that's fantastic. So there we are. That's what I want to talk about is Abbey College Cambridge. Welcome and an overview, if you like, about what we have here in the college. So I'm going to talk to you about uh, three areas and then we'll talk about January. So I just want to oh, give you an overview about the, uh, the community we have, the outcomes for students and where students go. I think those are probably three important areas for people thinking about coming to, to join us to study. Um, so we'll start with the first one, the world-class learning community. So really, what is it like to be here? Well, um, we are working in a, a bespoke campus. What that means is where, where we work here, the, the building I'm in, the facilities we have, we built. So we designed and we built five years ago this site. So it is purpose built for education and we built it for educating international students. We are a specialist international college, as I, I'm sure you understand. And there's a couple of photographs on there. These were taking, taken in the happy days before we socially distanced. So now there, there is social distancing in, in the dining room, as you, as you might expect. But those are the, the days before the, the epidemic changed some of the ways that uh, we, we use our spaces. Um, and as, it's, as you can see, the school itself is purpose built. This is what it looks like if you imagine it as a cake. This is one of my favorite slides. We, we had this cake made when we opened our building. You can see actually there's, there's two buildings there. The, the block, the, the cake that's in the front there is one of our teaching blocks. And the larger building behind has got boarding, teaching, sport facilities, music facilities, drama and art facilities on there as well, as well as our library and dining room. Um, if you want to see what it looks like, not as a cake, this is what it looks like. This is the actual uh, one of the buildings. And um, I am actually working here. I don't know if my mouse is appearing, but my, my office actually, it's, it's just here, just that side of the building. So I'm, I'm looking out of that building right now. And what you can see is, this is our, one of our boarding houses. So the, uh, the, the brick structure on the left, and that's our main building, main building for, for teaching with our library and dining room down here. So it is a beautiful modern campus. Um, we built into it lots of technology. So the technology we're using now, for example, the uh, touch screens, cameras, interactive uh, teaching, that's built into our classrooms and laboratories. So we all have large interactive screens. The technology is simply part of how we work. Even the badges we wear are smart badges. So we can register ourselves in class with these badges by simply tapping a screen. We can register that we've had our, our, our breakfast by tapping a screen or have our lunch. Some of the doors, like your bedroom door, opens because of your card and only your card. So it is a, it's a modern uh, boarding offer. If you like, that's what we're saying. This is a boarding house built in the last five years for international students. The school is older than that. So the school itself has been here for 26 years. So we have had a, a longer time in Cambridge. Uh, we, we moved uh, to the building we built five years ago. Okay, a quick note about the teachers. So that's one of our wonderful teachers called Chris. He's a fantastic physics teacher. The teachers that work here want to work with international students. They want to teach the older age range from 13, 14 years old up to about 20, 21 years old. They've chosen that. So that's GCSE, A-level foundation. And they are experts in their subjects. Many of them have been to Cambridge University or Oxford University, like Chris. Many have PhDs, 
like myself. It means their knowledge is very, very high and they're very passionate. And if you look at the bottom sentence, we're all teachers of English. That's something else we're very mindful of, that we're specialized they're international students. Many of our international students, therefore, are working in their second language, English. So all of our teachers know this and they're all trained in how to teach students working in a second language. So Chris is a physics teacher, but he knows his students, some of them will be working in a second language. And he knows he needs to change some of the ways that we deliver work because of that. Okay. Um, it's also a lovely, friendly environment. There are just over 400 students with us right now, but we have seven houses that they belong to. So you'll have an identity when you come and join us. You might be part of Zeus House or Jupiter House or Hera House. And your, your lanyard will be coloured according to the house that you're in. So you can identify your friends in your house. Those people live together in the same boarding house, as the name would suggest. And it gives you a sense of a smaller community within the bigger school. I think that's quite a nice, nice way of, 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 uh, of living. Actually, so we have a boarding system uh, in, with houses. We've got uh, many clubs and activities. And speaking of boarding, let me show you where you may live. So that first picture of Abbey House was the same picture, similar to the one I just showed. That's the campus. That's where I am right now. Next door, Purbeck House. If you look to the to that middle photograph, just to the left there. Again, if you see that building there, that's this building. So you can see this boarding house is next door. So you could live in, in Purbeck. Next door to this is Tripos. So we have three boarding houses as part of our on-site campus. And that's suitable for students of ages 13 up to 18 and even 19 can stay there. The younger children stay in Abbey House and they move across to the others in the subsequent years. Some of the older children, so typically students at about 18, 19, will choose to live in our new campus. So we recently built a new boarding house called Orchard House. And this might be something you choose to, to, to live in in the second year with us to give you perhaps a bit more independence because you're away from the main site. It's only, it's only one mile, less than one mile. There's, there's a bus or you could walk. But it's a, it's a separate entity. You can see it's got its own sports facilities there. It's got its own dining room. It's a, it's a lovely, um, a lovely community to, to live in. But that's an option for you. OK, so that's a quick overview of our community. We think it's a lovely school. Um, we've got staff who've worked here, like me, for over 20 years. So people do stay here. They, they like working in our small classes with our, with our wonderful students. Speaking of which, just a reminder about our results. Um, these are the A-level GCSE and foundation results for this year. They are extraordinary. Uh, we take great pride in working in small class sizes with our students, making sure that everybody understands because there may be an average of 10 in a class. OK, um, and we do things beyond the curriculum. So we're very keen on helping students become perhaps more excited to go beyond a level to to perhaps take part in Olympiads or take part in debating competitions, national competitions and so on. So we have a lot of success in those areas. OK, I'm going to move on to the third area of the talk. So I've talked about the, the school perhaps a little bit about the life of the school and where you might live, the outcomes for results. The third bit, now this is about, well, what do people do afterwards? And I think it's probably one of the most important things for you to understand and maybe to talk with your, with your parents if you're, if you're a student about what Abby does. Because the reason we've made this community, this amazing community and this fantastic school with these great teachers, the reason we've done that is to help you on a journey to university. That's really our purpose, to help you go from high school in your country to an amazing university in the UK with a bit in the middle. So what kind of universities do people go to? OK, so you can see here for the last two years, eight students have gone to Oxbridge, the two top universities in the UK, and about one third of our A-level students every year go to the UK top five universities. So these are the universities that are generally considered to be the finest in the UK. 
there might be some debate. You might take one out and put another one in perhaps, but these are the ones that we feel consistently are the top universities demanded by people in different countries and they're perceived to be the best in the UK. Cambridge, Oxford are always the top two. Then Imperial London School of Economics and UCL, University College London. There are many, many other fine universities. You may have heard of universities such as Edinburgh, uh, Bath University, Bristol, Manchester, King's College London. These are all fine universities, but the elite perhaps are of those top five universities. And a third of our students every year go to those top five. So that, I hope, should make you perhaps feel that you can do it too. That, that's what we want when you come to us. We want you to think, well, I, I can do this too. How can I get there? Well, we've, I'll cover some of that actually in, in this talk, but that, that's the aim, that's what we're for. The other fine universities in the UK, um, there are over 130 universities here. But of course, if you rank them in terms of the, the quality measures that we have, you end up looking at the top and there are a group of 24 universities at the top of the rankings, which form a group which they call themselves Russell Group. That's the name of the top 24. And the reason they're the top is because they are world class universities. So if you look at the work they produce, the research they produce, if you look at where the, the, the research is published, you'll see that they are published in top world journals. So for example, I'm, I'm a scientist. So if I had a paper published in uh, Nature, for example, that would be uh, an indication that my research was at the very top of my field. So that's how you measure the, 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 uh, the quality of these universities. So the Russell Group are considered to be world-class universities. So it's a target for many students. It's a very hard university to get into any of these 24. But, but you can see, again, this year, 81% of our A-level students went to Russell Group Universities. So you need top grades for that and a very strong application. We also have a foundation course and the foundation course is a shorter course. It's one year. So there's less content in it. So it's harder to get into a top university with a foundation course wherever you do a foundation course. It's just harder because a university at the top will look at foundation and say, well, hang on, you've only spent one year studying, whereas A-level students spent two years. So we're going to look more closely at you to make sure you're ready. So it's, it's harder to get in. And actually, to get into a Russell Group University after the one year foundation course is particularly hard. So it, it's quite extraordinary and it, it, it's testament to the course, the teachers and our students, that over half of our foundation students get to the UK's top 24 universities. So I put this there to reassure you and to say to you, I want you to do this. Come and join us. We've been doing this for 20, 26 years, uh, five of which in this fantastic campus. And I want to get you there we, with the staff come to work to get this goal for you. That's their purpose here in, in, in the end, in the bigger picture. OK, so I'm going to talk to you now about three areas that I think are quite interesting for you to know at this point about how we do this, because it's all very easy for me to say every year a third of our students go to the top five universities, four fifths go to Russell Group universities. Students always go to Oxford and Cambridge every year. How does it happen? Well, you, you saw the picture of one of my teachers. The teachers here are pretty good. I have to say, I would have my child uh, educated. I've, I've got a child in, in, who's a bit younger, uh, a child in primary school. I would have them being taught here. I have to say, I think these are the finest teachers I've come across. The reason I've got such great teachers is because it's a lovely place to work because the students are fantastic. They're very uh, ambitious. Class size is not very large, so we can get on with lots of work and make progress. So we've got great teachers here. But we also need to be honest with each other about getting into a top university. It's hard. You will know that getting into study at Oxford or Cambridge or perhaps to study medicine anywhere in the UK is hard. And it's for this very simple reason. There's competition. So that's the first notion I just want to talk about now is there is competition 
to get into top universities. You get into them not simply on your academic results. So in some countries, it's simply the grade in your tests. If you get 95% average, you can go to this university. If it's 90, you can go to this one. It's a little different in the UK because it's actually about your academic grades and your application. So you might imagine pretty much all the students that apply to the Russell Group universities are going to get A's and B's in their A-levels or A stars, A's and B's, because they're smart people. You can almost guarantee if a student's applying to Cambridge University, they're going to get A's and A stars because otherwise they probably would apply to a slightly, slightly lower ranked university. So if you are Cambridge University, you, you have thousands of applications from really smart students. How do you choose? Well, you look at what people have written about themselves and you will interview them. Not all universities interview, but certainly Cambridge, Oxford, or medical schools will interview you. So how do you get to there? How do you, we, I, I, we can probably understand how you get high grades in your subjects by, by performing well, because you've been very well taught. We've gone through a process of, of making sure you have good understanding, testing your knowledge, preparing you. So you know how you can get good grades, but how do you apply to a university with a strong application? The simple answer is you have to know about the subject you're applying to and know why you want to study there. So for example, a lot of our students want to study subjects like um, engineering. Okay, so you don't study A-level engineering. There is no A-level engineering. Nobody learns in the class about engineering. So when you apply to university, you have to say to the university, I, I want to be an engineer. I, I'm, I'm deadly serious. I love engineering. And this is why. So you have to be able to, to, to apply with knowledge to sell yourself about why they should pick you to study engineering. You may not know that now. You may not know a great deal about engineering, really. So we have a program to help you. The pre degree diploma. This is one of two programs to help with your application to, to fight off the competition. We have competition, so preparation. This is one of two extra courses. I believe only we do in the UK. I've not heard of anything like this in other schools and I have looked around. The pre-degree diploma starts in January. So for the students who are with us now, they don't have this course yet. They start in January. And if you're thinking of joining in January, perfect timing. You'll join when these classes start. They start in January and they run alongside your A-levels or your GCSEs or your foundation courses. And they are preparing you for university application. So you can see the sorts of things that they do. One, that, that one of the, the slides shows a group of students presenting to the whole of the lower six, to whole of year 12. They worked in a team to come up with a project. They've, they, they've presented and therefore they've researched something. So perhaps they've researched something in engineering. Beneath them, some another group have written a, a scientific poster and they're now presenting their poster. The group on the top are in the University of Cambridge engineering department. So they're actually finding out what does one of the best engineering departments in the world do? What do they do all day? What do professional engineers do? What do university students do in the engineering department? You can't beat actually being there, seeing it and talking to the professors there. And then the group below are doing, as it turns out, an engineering project. All of these things prepare you because you're thinking like an engineer. You're speaking to engineers. You're also reading books about engineering and you're doing a project with other students about engineering. Or perhaps for you, it's medicine or it's business or it's law or architecture or art and design. We have pre-degree diplomas for all courses, all different courses we have a pre-degree diploma for. So you'll be attending the one that's relevant to you. And if you don't know what you want to study at university, that's fine because one session you can go and see what the engineers do the next week you're allowed to go to see what the the uh, e economists are doing perhaps the week after the enterprise the business club and maybe back to engineering when you've when you've worked out actually i, I think i want to apply for engineering that's all part of the process so remember competition preparation through the pre-degree diploma and then we also have this course 
Inspires program, Abbey Inspires. So these are additional opportunities for you to learn in academic areas. So all of our teachers produce programs either before school starts or after school. So the programs for before school are for students currently remote learning. So we have some students still at home joining in January and the evening programs are for the people that are here. So you can see the sorts of things that we do. We, we come together to uh, understand something interesting perhaps in history, that's the top slide, or in psychology. The slide with all the people outside, that's astronomy club. We actually go out to the country where the skies are bright, full of stars, there's no light pollution, and we set up our telescope. We have a very nice telescope. Um, so that's a fun activity. If you've never seen the stars in another galaxy, well, come and join us because we'll show you the stars in another galaxy. It's quite extraordinary. You can see also we go to the engineering department. There are big sort of talks you can see in the middle there. Um, we have external speakers in. You can see where it says Isaac Physics there. And, and we present to each other when we go out to see other people. So you can see there's a, a group um, going to uh, print works actually as it happens. So lots of interesting enrichment activities to give you more understanding of the subject you want to apply to at university. That's the, that's the secret here about why we do so well at getting children to universities that are at the top of the league table. Okay, so that's my three points about the school, the community, the results, and this very important destinations and how we get there. Let me talk to you about January, because of course that's the, uh, the next opportunity to come and join us. We have an entry in September and January every year, it's quite normal. So in January, all our A-level subjects are available, all of our GCSE subjects are available. We would, um, we would start 18-month programmes in both of those. The difference of course is your age. So in the UK, students aged 14, 15, 16 take GCSE level. And when they're older than that, people move on to A-level. So we have students starting A-level aged perhaps 16, 17, 18, sometimes even 19 uh, um, in exceptional circumstances. It's absolutely fine. So those courses are available for us in January. All of our subjects are available. So um, if, you've, if you've had a, a look at our website, you'll see that we offer um, uh, maths, further maths, physics, chemistry, biology. So, so sciences and mathematics, um, those are popular subjects, I have to say here. Um, there's lots of commerce, economics, business, accounting, very strong department. We have humanities subjects here, so that would be um, English literature, history, geography, uh, there's art and design, uh, psychology. Uh, so it's a, it's a, a good range of subjects, um, but it also gives a clue as to the kind of special specialty that a lot of, a lot of our students want. It is as I mentioned, things like maths and engineering at universities. It's business, enterprise, economics, uh, management at university, law, perhaps medicine is, is actually very, very popular here, um, as well as uh, sort of allied subjects uh, in, in humanities. Um, so, so that's our subject range. We also have a new program starting in January, uh, a six month foundation course. So normally foundation is, is a nine month course. Normally it's taught over three terms. From September, that's one term, January, another term, April, a third term. That's the normal course. We've decided this year to introduce two term foundation courses in business, engineering and humanities. So this may be of interest to you. So the things to note about the foundation course, it's six months, the A-level and GCSE are 18 months. So in six months, you will then be able to go to university. And if you remember, over half of the foundation students this year who finished went to a Russell Group University. So you have access to some very, very fine universities. But please understand, it is a six month course. So you have two terms to learn the work that other students are learning in three terms. So be prepared. It's going to be a hard course for you. It's going to be intensive. There'll be more work maybe than you've done before. It'll be hard. But if, you're, if that's the kind of challenge that you want, then please come, come and join our six month course. I would also say, because at the end of that course, next summer, you're ready then for university, universities like students to be at least 18 years old. So this course, the IFP, is suitable for you if you are at least 17 years old and you're ready for a short hit of intense academic work. 
If you do want to uh, go for the six month course, we will we will help you start applying for university as soon as you're ready. In other words, this term before you arrive. So go through the application process. If you sign up and you go through the interview process and we're both happy, you and, your, and us, for you to do the six month course, we'll then start your university application with you on Teams or Zoom with my directors of studies, one to one with you. So we'd do that, we'll do that in November or December to get you started so that when you join in January, you don't have to worry too much about that. You can get on with the academic work. OK, there's also some practical matters because, of course, um, there is a global pandemic right now. And so we do need to consider some uh, additional measures. So there are quarantines required for some students. It depends where you are flying from. Uh, so currently there are many countries where you do not need to quarantine or self-isolate on, on, on arrival into the UK. Um, those countries include uh, some in the Far East, for example, in, in Southeast Asia. So uh, Thailand, uh, Vietnam, Malaysia, South Korea, Hong Kong are on the list right now of countries where you do not need to quarantine. So you'll be joining us in January and you'll be joining classes. Absolutely fine. If you are from a country that's not on the list, then we will quarantine in your boarding house. So you will arrive, you'll come into the bedroom that, that uh, you booked in one of our four boarding houses, and you'll spend the first two weeks in what's called a bubble. You'll be with other students who've also arrived at that time because you're allowed to, to meet those people. It might only be three or four other people, so you'll have some contact. Members of staff will be coming in. They'll be wearing PPE, of course, just to make sure that everybody's safe. Your meals will be delivered catering. You'll be asked to choose your meals beforehand. So we've got a, a big menu system. Uh, the food's very good, I have to say here. So it'll be delivered to your door. Uh, so you don't need to worry about that. Laundry will be collected. There'll be boarding staff there all the time with you. So there'll be people around. Um, you'll have your induction. So your welcome to the college will be delivered this way through Teams. People who are your housemasters will also be going in to see you. So you'll get face to face. They'll be wearing protective equipment at this point for quarantine and your lessons will start and that brings us on to the idea of remote learning so in this new world we have live lessons happening so right now there are classes happening uh, down the corridor from where I'm sitting and beneath me in the classrooms and we also have what we call remote lessons so that means lessons happening through the computer and our staff have been doing this since March so we use Microsoft, we use Teams, OneNote, and other pieces of software on there. So it's very intuitive for staff to teach remotely. So they will give you the information, they'll post up resources on OneNote. You can do your homework remotely. You can even write your homework on a pen and paper, photograph it, stick it up, and the teacher will then mark it for you and post it back to you. So you have exactly the same work delivered to you as children learning in class. Students do not fall behind, they make the same progress, and we use the same teachers. So during your two-week quarantine, if it applies to you in January, you'll be having your lessons, and then you'll be joining the class live. So we're very experienced at this, and it, it does work very well. We have to do the quarantine, of course, it is the current legislation, and no doubt as time goes on, the situation will change and, and we will adapt. Um, just to also to, to reassure you that we are working under um, the lowest level of risk, if you like, in the UK, in Cambridge, in terms of the number of viral cases here, but we take it very, very seriously. So there are many, many measures. Here's some of them. Everybody has their temperature checked every day, without exception. Um, there's a one-way system around the school. Um, we have social distancing, so the, the seating is further apart. So I mentioned in the dining room, we no longer have children sitting next to each other. There's spaces, there's spaces in all our classrooms and so on to keep us all safe. Class size is reduced. We have uh, hand sanitizers like this. Um, before, at, at the end of every class, we sanitize the, the desks with sanitizers. Each time a class happens, every single time, there are protective screens, one-way systems, and so on. There we are, that's just some of the examples of the measures that we have around the school. Great, okay, well, look, um, I'm, I'm 
drawing to a close now and I just wanted to finally show you one picture this is just a picture we took of one of our notice boards to show you the clubs that are going on because I've talked a lot about some of the hard things like academic study and, and how we're going to help you achieve and go to university also some of the measures to keep us all safe we we have no cases here of, of the virus we haven't had any so uh, we are still um, treating it very very seriously and we are we are making sure that stays the same. Um, but we've also got lots of clubs going on. And a lot of these clubs you will be doing during quarantine. You'll be doing them online. OK, here's just a, a typical. We have many boards like this. And you can see the sorts of things that we do for fun here. There's you can see there's a football, basketball club, badminton club. Um, we have biology, yoga, running, uh, creative writing, iron medic club, for example, as chemistry masterclass, philosophy club, debate club school newspaper so the life of the school is very much still going on here students are partaking in activities and enjoying the experience beyond the classroom and the and the uh, university applications brilliant okay so i'm going to come to a close um that i hope will be you by the way in a couple of years chucking your graduation hat up in the in the air after thriving at abbey college cambridge so thank you very much for uh, joining me this morning um i would love now to uh, answer any questions that you may have um so perhaps john you might like to facilitate that hello thank you julian thank you for that presentation it was really insightful and interesting um Thank you very much, everyone. Um, please do post any questions that you have. Um, I can see um, some of the questions have already come in as well. Um, just to reiterate for anyone who wasn't here at the start, we will send a copy of the recording to you afterwards. We'll send you a link to, to view that and also a copy of Julian's presentation. Um, so you'll be able to view that. Please do post any questions in, in, in the chat box now um, or in the Q&A box as well. Um, but we do have some that were sort of submitted through the through the session and beforehand, so I'll start going through them. Um, one of the questions we had, Julian, was, was, was just um, wanting us to expand a bit in terms of what the first week in the college, so a student who joins us in January, what sort of things do we do to help them ease into, into life yeah. in college? Okay, good, good question. So um, the, the, the first week is when we uh, have induction. So that's the name we give for settling you in to the UK, if you've just arrived, uh, perhaps Cambridge, settling into Cambridge, into this new country, new culture, new college. And really, that depends on whether you're coming from a country where you need to quarantine or not. So if you're not coming from a country where you need to quarantine, for example, I mentioned uh, currently the list includes Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, South Korea, and so on, then you'll be joining us and you'll be, you'll be met at the airport by somebody with a, a sign with your name on it, waiting at Heathrow Airport, perhaps. Heathrow is about one and a half hours away by taxi. So you'll be uh, arriving, uh, picked up, collected, brought straight to the college where one of our staff members will be waiting for you. So you'll be met at the airport and you'll be taken to the college where you'll also be met. Uh, and you'll be welcomed in and you'll be taken to the study bedroom that you have uh, that you've already uh, chosen with our accommodation team. So in one of those four different boarding houses. So you're brought in. Uh, your room will be ready for you, so it'll, we uh, we know exactly who's coming and what time they're arriving, which room. So it's very very well organised here, um, and and then basically you're now part of our school. So the first week involves induction. So induction is really finding your feet. So the first thing that happens is you're introduced to the the people who live in the boarding house with you. They will be people in your year group. So if you're joining year group year twelve to start A level, there'll be people there who are also joining at that point, year 12. Some might have started in September for the two year A level program. Some might be year 13 students who've been here for a little while longer. Some even maybe year 10 or year 11. It really depends on, on your boarding house and the floor. Uh, they're single gender, of course. So you'll know all the, the boys if you're a male uh, or the girls if you're a female. So um, you, you'll get to know those people quite quickly anyway. And there are boarding staff members that live there. So you'll get to know the boarding team as well quite quickly. Then you'll start to get to know the group of students in your form or your tutor group. We call it a tutor group here. And again, your tutor group will be students from the same boarding house. If you remember the house structure we have, the, the coloured lanyard that you'll be given. Perhaps you'll, you'll be given an orange one because you live in Hira. So your tutor, your form group will be people from that boarding house. It'll be mixed. So you'll have uh, boys and girls in the tutor group up to about 14 in a tutor group with your personal tutor. Your personal tutor is 
is your guide at the start and during your time in the college. The member of staff that you will see every day. You meet your personal tutor at 9 a.m., start of every day, and at the end of one day on a Tuesday for an assembly and a gathering of your house. Okay, so the personal tutor is a very important role for you. They, they will mediate you settling in. So one of the things that will happen when you go to school and you meet your tutor group is you'll start to get to know the people in your tutor group. So you'll, you'll start to see, okay, yeah, the, the, there are people here just like me, people who come from different countries. Uh, you'll find a variety of nationalities in your tutor group. We have currently 48 different nationalities in the student body. So people from literally all over the world, about a quarter of the world's countries are represented in the college. So you'll start to get to know those people. You'll start to settle in and you'll find you start to get a little more comfortable being in a, a new place because you'll find people are very friendly and welcoming. And the people that have been here longer than you will know what it was like when they joined. So we have also student ambassadors and you'll see them because they'll wear a, a, a particular kind of uh, hoodie with student ambassador. So they're, 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 they've elected to help new students. They've volunteered to help out new students. So they'll be part of your induction group. So getting to know your tutor group, you then have tours of the college. You will, um, you'll go through some practical processes of formal registration and getting your own card with your own badge on it, your own, uh, your own photo. This will be the key to your room and so on, as I've mentioned. Um, there are various other activities um, you might wish to open a bank account, so we'll, we'll facilitate that with you. Um, some students have to register with the police at some point in the next 30 days. Um, the police come here. We've got a very friendly member of the police team that comes and registers students. It's a, it's a formality, but we don't ask you to go to the police station. The police come here. So it's all thought of. We've mediated all of the new activities for you, so you settle in. And also we appreciate when you first arrive, you're gonna be tired as well because you'll have traveled a long way. You may be even in a different time zone, of course. So things might be quite tiring, but we, we understand that. During the first week, you also will start your lessons. So if you're in, um, if, you're, if you're from an air bridge country as it's called, your lessons will start here. And you'll start lessons that start when you arrive. So you won't be joining classes with students who've been in those classes since September. We always start new classes. So your class for your GCSE or your A-level or your foundation will be just you and other students who've just joined. So that's the 18 month program for the A-level and GCSE or six months for foundation. Um, and if you're uh, learning uh, through quarantine, of course, you have the similar activities, but it's mediated through your computer in your study bedroom and through staff coming to see you in the PPE. So the first two weeks, You'll have the same, the same induction, you'll have the same lessons, but it'll be done through the computer. Great, thank you, John. Thank you, Julian. Um, just, as a, just as a follow up to that, we've had another question. In, the induction will actually, asking when induction starts, it actually starts straight away. So from, from, from the yep. 4th of January, yep. um, the induction will start. Um, one of the questions just around that, thank you, we're getting lots of questions through, by the way, thank you, please have, keep them coming. Um, someone has, has asked, um, do they have to do any exams on arrival um, and can they do more than one club? Oh, OK, yes. So um, we we are actually a non-selective school. So what that means, we don't admit only students with top grades. That's something that um, all of the schools in our company, there are 20 schools. This is the philosophy we all share, that we allow children to come because they want this kind of school. They want to come to a modern ambitious, forward-thinking uh, international boarding school. So we are not selective. Uh, we have a minimum criteria of uh, academic re uh, results and English level. But we do want to know what your strengths are. We want to diagnose your abilities in different areas. So all students do a diagnostic test on arrival uh, and an English test. So we, we diagnose what your strengths are and we diagnose your English level because then that allows us to put you into the right English class. So we have different levels of English ability. And it also, it allows us to tell the teachers what, what your background is, give, you a, a, give, give them a little bit more information. So they can, they can start thinking, ah, okay, so this student has come from Vietnam. This is their background from high school in Vietnam, in year 10 perhaps. And this is the, the test result that they got. So the test result gives you different uh, categories of information. So it's not something to worry about, and it's not something I want you to prepare for, because 
it's not going to test your knowledge of content it's going to test your abilities so some of your thinking abilities so it just gives us a clue but we we don't talk about it afterwards we don't say to you oh you didn't do you didn't do very well because it's not what the test is for the test is to help your teachers to know what your background is everybody gets treated the same we, we teach all of our courses from the start so we don't expect you to know any a-level biology before you start a course in a-level biology but it is good for the a-level biology teacher to know where you're from what your background is and perhaps some of the strengths that you're bringing bringing to the table um, in terms of clubs please join as many clubs as you can we 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 love club attendance. We, we record club attendance and it's part of a reward process here. Clearly, you're not going to be joining 20 clubs because uh, there isn't the time. But I would like you to join three or four because, you know, they, there are clubs that happen before class in the morning. There are clubs happening at uh, three o'clock after lessons end for an hour, perhaps before your supper. There are clubs in the evening, clubs on the weekend. Join them. Um, just as an example, I, I run uh, the medicine club. So um, that's that's my expertise, if you like, is medical school applications. I have a team of five other teachers who help me uh, look at uh, medical applications. So for the students who want that, I ask them to come to Medic Club. So that's on um, Thursdays after school at 3.15. But I also say, well, if you want to be a doctor, get more comfortable about public speaking because you'll seem much more confident. So I would suggest you go to Debate Club, which is on Sunday afternoons in boarding. And why don't you go to philosophy club, because that's on Saturday morning, just to discuss ideas, just to get used to arguing. So when you have an interview, you're perhaps more comfortable in, in, in talking about your views. So those are good. That's a good suite of clubs. It's not too onerous. One's on Thursday for an hour. One's on Saturday morning for an hour. One's on Sunday for an hour. And perhaps also why don't you join football, have a run around uh, or yoga, perhaps get a bit of uh, of uh, a relaxation on a, on a Tuesday at 6.30 after supper. So the clubs are there for students to take part in. There are lots of them deliberately right now. Of course, um, we socially distance in these clubs, so the clubs are not, not packed together. So we have lots of them uh, with lots of appropriate space. We also use the next door sports centre. So we have our own sports hall. It's actually in the photograph with the children throwing their hats in the air. That's the sports hall. But next door to our building is the biggest um, sports centre in Cambridge. And we block book that. So we've got lots of facilities uh, at our disposal. So, yeah, please join clubs. You'll you'll be the better for it. Um, and universities like it. They like to see that you can relax and that you like doing things. You like painting for a hobby. And, and on that subject, by the way, um, Nobel Prize winners are four times more likely to also be musicians. What does that say? It means people who are making breakthroughs it, and, and awarded for those breakthroughs on a global scale also have other interests. So they're four times more likely to be musician than other people and 17 times more likely to be painters. And these are Nobel Prize winners, physicists, literature, perhaps art, scientists. Um, so having other interests is a good thing, actually. Great. John. Thank you, Julian. And just to follow up uh, to Gregory, who who, who asked uh, that question, um, we will send you the entry requirements for A-level and uh, uh, for, for obviously for, for progressing onto the course. Um, we'll also um, send you the information about what we require on the English side of things. Uh, we do not require an IELTS, but we require an equivalent. So it can be an equivalent test and also your students can can do the test as part of the application. We could administer that test. So don't worry about that. But I'll send you some details as well. Um, Julian, just a couple of um, academic questions just to, to put, put them together. Um, someone's asked um, just to get a bit more information about IFP destinations and has also asked the questions. Can you go to UCL from the IFP? Um, and then we've had another question, um, which is about the 18 month A level, saying they, they, their, their perception of it is that it's quite a tough A level. Um, um, what's our experience with how students perform on the 18 month A level versus the, the two year A level? OK, so um, a few things there. Um, the 18 month A level, um, it's the same content as the two year A level, because the content is given from the exam boards, which are informed by the government. So the UK government determines the curricula in this country. So, you, so the 18 month is not less work. It's the same work as the two year. So actually, the two-year course runs over 
two academic years of three terms each. So six terms. If you join in January for the 18 month, what's really going on is you don't do the first one. You join for the January term. So you have the same work in five terms. We start here with new classes. So we start the work in January rather than in September. So what it means is, of course, you have to work more quickly to cover the same content in five terms, not six. So you can conclude from that, it's harder. Yep, it's harder. It's more intense, particularly for the first two terms. So you just need to be aware that um, A-level has a certain content. It's designed to be delivered over six terms. We can deliver it over five. We've done a lot of analysis to understand how do people perform compared to the six term course? And the answer is exactly the same. In other words, the student results at the end of A-level bear no relation to whether they did it over five or six, which suggests to me that people that join in January on the five term, they just work a little harder, a bit more intensively at the start, actually. Um, so that, that's that. Let me um, also, I'm just gonna quickly look because I can show you the foundation destinations. So I'm gonna put on the screen now um, a lot of information, but don't worry, I will talk you through really briefly. Um, right, I am going to stop sharing that screen and I'm gonna share this screen. So hopefully you can see now a lot of information on your screen. Don't worry too much about trying to understand all of it. It's really to show you the list of universities and courses, the pass rate and the IELTS rate. So there's a lot of information. I don't expect you to, to, to follow it, of course, but just to be, to be reassured, there's a lot of UK universities that will accept foundation. You can see this is alphabetical for the business course. I'll just move it down slightly so you can see. You can see, look, it includes Bath, the university I went to, very high ranked university, Birmingham, City, Coventry, Durham, Essex, Greenwich, Kings is on the list. These are universities that have accepted our students in the past and they want to accept them again in the future. In other words, these are universities that you can go to with the business management course. Let me take the screen down so you can see further down. There we go, more courses at top universities like Manchester, Reading, Southampton. UCL has been mentioned, no. Don't think you can get to UCL or any other elite university with foundation. There are some courses that claim it, but I've not heard of anyone who's actually done it. I, I wouldn't want to offer the child that possibility because UCL is, an, is a global elite university and they will simply say, well, I'm sorry, you have to have studied for two years for your A-level rather than one year for foundation. OK, so foundation is a great option um, if you uh, are ready because it is only one year. Uh, most students prepare here for university over the two year pe period of time. So if you're ready, if you're 17 years old, foundation's a great option, but it's, it's not unfortunately uh, acceptable to the elite universities, okay? Like I said, there are some courses uh, that claim you can get to UCL, but those foundation courses tend to be as hard as A-level. Okay, in other words, they do all of the same work as A-level in half the time. So that's very, very hard. We don't offer that. Our courses is a modified content, still a lot of material to get through, but it gives you access to from Bath downwards. So, so it's a very good university uh, preparation. Um, let me also spin you down to look at, you can see engineering. So that's where the engineering list starts. And it's the same uh, class of universities. You can see Bath, Cardiff, Exeter, uh, going down to Leeds, uh, Liverpool and so on. So a very good list of universities, but please understand foundation, there is less time. We, for example, we have less time to prepare you for the application. Just remember the, the pre-degree diploma is something that we do before you apply on a foundation course, you apply at the beginning of the course because you've only got one year. So there's less preparation time, but nevertheless, this is the success of our students. Great, John. Thank you, Julian. Um, just a couple of more questions on the academic side of things. Um, uh, an anonymous attendee has asked, um, are there any tests at the end of each term on the A-level A programme? And also, um, Kath has asked, um, 
what kind of support do we have uh, for students if they're struggling with their studies? Okay, good, sort of linked questions, really. Um, yes, so we, we have um, a lot of what are called low stakes testing. So low stakes means perhaps less formal testing. So the way that children work best uh, when they're learning is to be tested fairly frequently on a test where their parents don't see the result. That's what makes it low stakes. So maybe every three weeks in mathematics, you have a, a test in the class because the teacher wants to say, well, have you got this? Have you, been, have you been learning it? Do you get it? And if it's not right, don't worry because we're gonna fix this right now. So low stakes are sometimes called formative tests if you know the education terms. Um, and there's a lot of research on, on this of how students learn and they need to test themselves without fear that it being put into a certificate or put into a report and, and being sent to parents and, and being held into account in a very scary way. We do that, but that's done every term. So every term there are the more formal tests, which we sit under exam conditions in our exam rooms, in our hall, in our, and in our large classroom areas where all the, all the walls are opened up. So those tests are more formal. They are used to send reports out to parents and also to make judgments about how students are doing. Oh, OK, so because we have lots of smaller tests through the year, we have a very good understanding of the progress that children are making. And so every half term, the vice principal, our, our two vice principals um, and our house masters get together and discuss the performance of every single child in every subject, every half term, based on the informal tests and then at the end of the term on the formal tests. So. We look on uh, at all the data for all the tests they've done. And, and what we're trying to do is make sure that students are continuing to make progress. So what happens if a student uh, is, is not uh, finding the work easy? Well, first of all, they're in a small class, so they have a lot of time with the teacher. They are, they are told to speak up. We have dialogue in the class with the child. And when we give homework back, we say, right, let me talk about your homework. So in the class, there's a lot of support. There are also additional support uh, uh, lessons that students are, are, um, are sent to to cover any work they still didn't understand. Or perhaps they arrived uh, two weeks into the start of term, that happens. So there's support structure there. Most of the work though is in the class because the class size is small enough for us to allow the students who understand to do harder work while we go back to the students that don't understand. You can do that when there's 10 in a class quite easily. Um, good, so um, performance is measured informally during the, the term, formally at the end. We review every half term to make sure students are not falling behind. And if then we see that they are, we just make sure further intervention happens. Thanks, John. Thank you, Julian. Um, just, just a couple of other questions that have come through. I'm, I'm happy to answer them, but Julian, do do input if you'd like to. Um, Chukwudelu has asked, um, what uh, what tests determine the grades at the end of your A level? Well, you'll sit your your final um, exams at the end of the A level program. So, if you joined us in in January 2021, you'd sit those in the summer of 2022, and those are the grades that they are the tests that determine your grades. But obviously, it's really important that we're building your knowledge and monitoring your progress throughout that to give you the best chance of achieving those those um, those those top grades. Um, We've also been asked how well equipped is the school's gym. Um, so the equipment that we do have in the school's gym um, is, is things like running machines, rowing machines. We also have free weights as well. Um, it's, it's, it's quite a compact gym. I would compare it to a hotel gym. Uh, but we do take the equipment out of there and also use it in the hall as well, where we have fitness classes, things like high intensity high intensity training and circuit training as well and we also have many clubs as well which are active things like running club as well uh, we also do um, activities like yoga in there as well if you're really into your gym obviously we have various sports teams as well that you can join in with 
but there are also larger gyms very close to the school. There's actually one next door in the sports center that Julian mentioned, and there's one just at the top of the road. We have a large leisure, leisure park, which has things like cinemas, restaurants there, and that also has a, has a gym which you can subscribe to as well. So there's lots of fitness facilities either on campus or just very close by. Um, Julian, just one more question for you. Um, Wilson asked a little bit earlier, um, if a student it does have to quarantine in January for that two week period, um, are they able to leave the school uh, during that time? Ah, no, no. So um, quarantine, the um, the rule is that you are you have to stay in your what's called household in, in your home, basically. So when you arrive, your boarding house is your home. So you have to stay in your home now. Um, actually what happens you're working in what we call a bubble so it'll be your floor your common room so you can you can go to your common room and there'll be times of the day where you have access to the outside so we have various different outside spaces we've got some green spaces here we've got a little park next door we've got playground spaces so you have supervised access to that just your bubble so the notion of um quarantine is you do not come into contact with people outside of your bubble so you have to stay in your bubble inside and then three times a day you have access outside for a, for a stretch of legs. Um, we also do a little bit of um, physical exercise. So our PE teacher has lots of activities for students to, 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 to get their blood pumping and have a bit of exercise. So three times a day there's outside activities, but beyond the college you are not permitted to go. So it's rather like being told to stay at home, but you're allowed to use your garden. So for us, it's you have to stay in the boarding, but you're allowed to use the playground and the green spaces outside under our supervision. Okay, thank you, Julian. Um, and, and we just had a follow-up question, just you know, in terms of being in in, in, in an urban environment, how do we manage um, safety of children within the, within the environment of Cambridge? Yeah, sure. So, so the college um, is a campus. So we are located in, in, in Cambridge. We're, we're not in the center um, of where, where the universities are. We're slightly further out, which is why outside the window, you can see trees because uh, this is slightly out of the center. So it's not, not so dense uh, in terms of um, the uh, buildings here. We are down the end of a private road. So th the road um, to our college only goes to our college. And that's where our boarding houses, uh, the three boarding houses I mentioned and our main buildings are located. We've got that other boarding house where students get a coach to. So um, the, the, the campus itself is fairly isolated from town because there's no through movement of people here. We're on the end of a, uh, a, a, a road that only we use, no through traffic. Students are allowed uh, after quarantine to go into Cambridge. They're allowed to leave site. Um, this is something that I believe is essential. I think children have to be able to leave the boarding site because um, it's, I think for, for our well-being, it's good for us to be able to stretch our legs, to go out with our friends from the same boarding house together. Now, um, in the UK, there are certain rules, um, even in the lowest risk area, which is where we are, about face masks. So face masks are used, social distancing is used. And that's now the law. So if you go on a bus or a train or if you go into a shop, you have to wear your mask, you have to socially distance. So the children, when they're in Cambridge, follow the same rules as everybody else in Cambridge, uh, as us. Of course, we are supervising the children when they're here and they have to sign out. They have to see a member of the boarding staff and say, I'm going out with my friend for uh, an hour in Cambridge and they all know they have to be back in college to see the same boarding staff member to sign back in at a certain time. We actually check um, if you like we, we take attendance of all of our boarding students 13 times a day. Okay so you can imagine first thing in the morning we're checking everybody's coming out of their bedrooms for breakfast. When they have their breakfast their card whoop, goes onto a machine registers them at breakfast. They then go to their first tutor session that's registered. They then go to a lesson, that's registered. So we've got a very, very close eye on where the students are and when they're allowed to leave campus, where they're going, they sign out when they go, they sign back in and when they come back, they have their mobile phone and they go with, a, with another member of the student body as well. So that there's, there's company there. Um, so we believe that is the correct balance between safety 
and mental health well-being to allow students to have the experience of, of leaving sight. Don't forget these children are about to go to university and at university you have freedom. You're, you're treated as an adult. So we need to get you to a place where you, you've developed the confidence to find your way around, even in these conditions. Thanks, John. Thank you, Julian. And, and, and I think you answered the question that popped up in the, in, in the middle of that of, of your part there in terms of curfews. Yes, we have curfews. Obviously, yeah. students are expected to be back in the boarding at set times, depending on their age. Um, thank you. I think that pretty much um, has, has, has answered all the questions we've had pop up. Apologies if we haven't got to any or if I've missed any. Um, you will have another opportunity when you receive an email. Please do post it back if anything comes up or if you have any follow up questions, please do. But I think what we'll do is we'll let Julian sign off and we'll call that it for today. Thank you very much. Lovely. Well, thank you, John. That's uh, really kind of you to, to facilitate and to everybody on the, on the call. Thanks for your time today. Um, I hope it's uh, been, been of some help to you. Um, we uh, will we'll be delighted to welcome ambitious students into the school at any time. But obviously, we're looking now at, at January or perhaps even next September. So um, we'd love to help you on your journey to those terrific universities. So there we are from all of us at Abbey Cambridge. Have a great day and uh, lovely to speak with you. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.